Uh, it's about Concord. And if you don't know what happened with Concord, it is a PlayStation hero shooter uh, in development for eight years, four years actually in development, but eight years as a concept. PlayStation bought the studio because they thought it looked so good. I haven't played this, by the way, so I can't comment on that. Um, and the game completely flopped. And I think in this video, we will see how bad it flopped. But this is a video by Knowledge Husk. And um, we're going we're gonna to check it out. History. Let's this restart. This video was sponsored by Fabletics. More from them in I don't a know bit. what that is, so we're going to learn. What is the biggest flop in video game history? I mean, the first answer that comes to mind is like, what? E.T. for the Atari 2600? A game that was so bad that millions of unsold copies were apparently buried in the desert. And is, aren't those games like worth like a lot industry. of money now? Okay, part of that's true. Part, part of that is not entirely true. But either way, no, E.T. is not the biggest flop in gaming history. For one, the game actually sold kind of well. I mean, it didn't sell time. as well as Atari expected, but it sold over a million units. And also, That's impressive. it cost that much to make. In the early days of video games, the average cost to develop a game like this was hundreds of thousands of dollars. More than I would have guessed. Would go into marketing. Nowadays, it's pretty common for a lot of games to cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and then they still you got your refund. You did. Since we don't normally get exact budgets and sales numbers for a lot of games, we got to do some guesswork. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to look. So yeah, that whole Deadlock game that's out is very interesting to me. It's a like it's I think a third person shooter MOBA. Uh, I haven't checked it out yet, but maybe we will on stream after the beta is over. Steam. How many people are playing at the same time? Yes, I know most people who are playing video games probably aren't just on Steam, but it's the only metric we have and we can kind of extrapolate from there. And everyone the uses it, so. The biggest games will have a few hundred thousand players playing all at once. Some will even manage to break into the millions. Sometimes. Of course, it's extremely embarrassing when a game like Suicide Kill the Justice League, a AAA massive live service I didn't play this. WB, Did anyone play this? Only managed to have a peak player count of 13,000 players. This game probably Swag, cost up, hundreds of millions millions of dollars to make and for a live service this meant it was basically dead on arrival but even single player games can flop Forspoken, remember that? Yeah, that had a peak of 12,579 players. For context, the five-year-old indie game of Risk of day Rain one. 2 has almost 40,000 players as of the time I'm writing this. Skull and Bones, Ubisoft's infamous oh, quadruple yes. A pirate adventure, reportedly this looks horrible couldn't even to me. sell one million units. It sold e. way less copies. E.T. sold more copies than Hot Wheels Unleashed, which did not cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. And at least so far, these three games have been easily the top contenders for the biggest flops of all time in terms of money and spent they've been all and this money year. earned. Except for maybe Babylon's Fall, but no, nobody talks about that. But this all changed with Concord. When I want to ride a bike or row a boat or imagine I'm rowing a real boat, I find the easiest way to avoid public indecency charges is to wear clothes. This is why I'm glad oh. Fabletics sent me some of their stuff. I'm like, what does this have to do with Concord? wear that looks good and feels great. One of my big problems with going golfing or leaving my house is that general etiquette dictates that you look I have not played and my wardrobe Star Wars Outlaws yet. Of things that border on I don't know if I'll have time for it. But, but with Fabletics, I don't have to worry about that. Fabletics has a large collection of clothing from t-shirts to jackets to pants to shorts to pants to jackets to t-shirts to hats and everything in between. For me... It's perfect. I like all-purpose clothing. I like stuff that looks good in any situation, is functional, and most importantly, comfortable. I like comfortable clothes. So with Fabletics, you can sign up for this VIP program, which gives you genuinely incredible deals on this high-quality clothing. If you want to sign up with the service, but you don't want to pay every the single cat. month, you can skip months. But if you don't, you get a credit towards any two-piece outfit or any product up to $100 every month. Now there are other perks as well, and I that recommend thing you check legs. this out. So go to fabletics.com slash knowledge husk to get 80% off site wide when signing up to be a VIP member. Link is in the description.
So this game was developed by X Bungie staff. It had a lot of hype surrounding yes. it because of that fact a few years ago. Couple this with the fact that it was a PlayStation Studios game. And people expect- You guys are wondering who this guy is? It is Knowledge thing. Husk. But that hype died away the moment the first trailer dropped. It looked like another generic hero shooter. You know, a game where players- But I will say the cutscenes did look with good. Unique powers and work as a team to complete- Doesn't mean the gameplay is good. Another Overwatch clone in 2024. Not only that, the game looked like an obvious Guardians of the Galaxy knockoff. I, that's the it first thing that I said. Inspired by the films, which it's just weird because it's like, it's 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 not Guardians of the Galaxy. And of course, there was other problems, but I'll. I'll have to get to that in a bit. Now, honestly, most people did expect Concord to be a flop. I think everybody, with the exception of maybe a few journalists, knew this was this was going down. But nobody knew how bad it could do. Like this I is mean, the part where things all, get wild. Like if you guys haven't heard these numbers isn't and really stuff, doing that great at the moment. Valve is developing its own hero shooter, but that's not publicly available. That's what right we just now. talked about. Deadlock. And Marvel Rivals, yet another hero shooter, it's is doing set bad, to right? in December. Didn't so it have a beta or something? Yet. So this game did have Didn't competition, have but not really. Now this game was forty dollars, and those other titles are free. But yeah, Sony big just thing. released a live service for forty dollars. That turned out pretty True. well for them. This game also bypassed the microtransactions Rivals and battle passes up front, just offering a complete package, which is something a lot of people said they wanted. But even still, this game is almost definitely the biggest flop in gaming history. We don't know the exact budget. It could be 50 million, 100 million, 150, or even 200 or more. We don't know, but we know it it's cost a lot. a lot of money. Sony had huge expectations for this project. It took eight years to develop. They already approached Amazon's gaming anthology TV series, Secret Level, to make a Concord episode. Oh my God. The only other franchise that has a dedicated episode by PlayStation is God of War. This was supposed to be a big deal. Less people are playing Concord <sighs> on Steam than the number of developers All time peak who made seven the days. Game. Now to be fair, on PlayStation, where the game is plastered all over that storefront page, there is definitely more players, but probably not too many. Okay, so I've heard I've heard two things about this game, and I have any of you played it? Because I've heard two things. Number one, uh, number one is it's actually not that bad of a game. It's just nobody wanted it, so nobody played it. As you played it, what did you think? And then number two is that it should have just been a free to play game, and but it would the have failed either way. Sold for the week, or the top twenty, or the top thirty. And for a new game, for a triple A game, for a triple A live service console exclusive game this is that's another arrival. problem i would be astonished if it's still around this time next year and it's difficult to convey how big of a it's disaster not. this was just, just to be this clear it's not around they've closed it down so this video came out before they literally yeah, shut it down in the history books something that the executives will study relentlessly to figure out what went wrong so what went wrong so I bought the game, uh, wanted to see what, what's what's the big deal. And honestly, there is a time trial mode in the game where you go around and shoot targets and dodge obstacles and stuff. And I did terrible in my <laughs> extremely unoptimized run. And I'm still in the top 20 players in the world. What? That's how few people are playing this game. Come on, come on, let's... So why did it fail? Uh, I guess first of all, we, we could talk about the pricing. The game cost $40. That is a barrier of entry that 2. the other competitors nine stars, that's don't not have. Good. The competitors that are free to play. It just doesn't look very unique. Looks kind of generic. People are not going to pay $40 for something that looks like a Guardians of the Galaxy knockoff when the competitors are, are again, free. free. But number three, the, the third thing, the most important thing is the culture war. Wait, graphics and gunplay is world class. There is lag. Uh, it's definitely it's like Destiny PvP, OG Crucible. We have crew bonuses. It was fun while it lasted. No battle pass, yeah, because it's That's not it. free. But. Going mask off. Knowledge husk exposed. So if you don't know, the culture war started back in the 2010s when the hipsters had a great schism amongst themselves. Ooh, a schism. Half of them were really into Sleater Kinney and Frap Haze, and the other half was into Electro Swing. 
in hand-brewed coffee. They started fighting and it kind of just went off the rails from there. I don't know where Most this is people going. people don't know anything about Concord except for two things. They know that it has these character designs and that the robot has pronouns in its bio. This got the game memed into oblivion. Okay. From the moment it was revealed, it was doomed to be labeled as peak cringe by the internet, by the target demographic. I mean, it is pretty cringy. Yes, if it was a free game, it would have more players. Yes, if it was a single player game, it would have more players. If it wasn't a hero shooter or wasn't so generic, it would have more players. But the problem here is not that the game didn't have enough players, it's that it didn't have any players. This is a disaster, unlike anything the gaming industry has seen before. And I, 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 you I just that, gotta ask that yourself, is true. When what you, makes when you literally have less people playing the game than developed it, what the hell happened? This game difference than so many others. A lot of it's the character designs. It is. If Concord had the same character designs as the first Descendants. If each hero looked like this, do you think that the game would have sold more or less copies? Good point. And of course, I can't ignore the monkey in the room. <laughs> Black Myth Wukong, a game from a Chinese studio based on Journey to the West, managed to sell 10 million copies Holy in three days Jesus. this week. Yes, many of these sales are going to be from the game's home country, but a lot are still from Americas, in the Europe's. And I think they've already laid off like most there. of the studios. It's by far the top selling game on PlayStation right now, as opposed to the game that was made by PlayStation that nobody's playing. So why are so many people interested in playing this random Chinese action game as opposed to Concord? I honestly think this comes down to not um, what you think, like the polish of the game or anything like that. I think it has to do with just the market. People want a game like a Souls like or something along those lines. I know I know Black Myth is not exactly the same as that, but they're more interested in those style games than like hero shooters. Even they said in this video, Overwatch 2 isn't doing great and it's like top of the market in hero shooters. Lord. Well, I mean, Black Myth Wukong looks fun, but like not not 10 million copies in three days fun. That is pretty much unparalleled numbers except for the biggest releases in gaming history. This game is getting absurd concurrent numbers on Steam. And I think the reason for this is, again, the culture war. We're seeing a reverse boycott. So remember how the media covered GTA in the early 2000s? Every news outlet was saying how bad Grand Theft Auto was for the moral health of By our the society. Way, how that was a planned thing evil, bad, for and marketing. So on and so forth. Now, what did this do? This gave GTA more publicity. Gamers heard that this. They hired GTA a marketer to do this. It was a forbidden fruit, and it got them curious. And now, dec decades later, GTA is as big as any game can get. Not because it's still that forbidden fruit, it's really not, but. It got the ball rolling. The same thing happened with Black Myth Wukong. Game journalists have had a bone to pick with this game for a while, for reasons that I'm not really gonna... But long story short, they kept saying, don't play this game. Don't play this game. And just like GTA, it got people curious. People started to ask, why shouldn't I play this game? I have no really idea what the drama is behind this. On the this? other hand, Concord was seen as the safe, friendly, broad, marketable, four quadrant style release, corporate slop cringe. You get to this point where there are two completely unrelated games and unrelated genres that are getting compared because one represents the establishment. Is it literally just the, the other monkey thing? The represents the thing that the game journalists don't want you to know about. Did every single person who bought Monkey Game buy it simply because an article on IGN made them angry? No, probably not. Wait, 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 wait. I'm playing with accusations, sexism. Oh. Single person who bought Monkey Game buy it simply because an article on IGN made them angry? Personal agendas, no, yeah. Probably not, but it got people talking. They bought the game. They told their friends. And just like GTA, all publicity is good publicity there. thing. As for Concord, people just saw clips of it online. They saw the memes and they thought, wow, this looks bad. I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to play that. And if you want one short, quick, concise answer to why Concord failed, that is it. This is it. But if you want a longer one, 
I can provide that as well. <laughs> okay, so do you know how long it took Naughty Dog to make the original Uncharted? It Three years. Two years. Damn, I was Started close. Started development in 2005, released in 2007. Concord took eight years to make. This is astonishing. This is baffling. I mean, I've, I've played the game. It feels polished. I believe that a lot of work went into this. But eight years is wild. A lot can change in eight years. Yes. That's a long time in terms of culture. So, wait, wait, wait. How many years ago did Overwatch 1 come out? Somebody look that up. Somebody look up when Overwatch 1 came Imagine out. Imagine if the original Uncharted took eight years to make. That would have meant that it started development in 1999. 2016? So, 2016 is eight years ago. Convenient. Look how good that game did in 2016. This is making the sense now. The industry changed a whole lot in these eight years. The top grossing game that released in 1999 was not some action game or some FPS. It was Donkey Kong 64. Love the game. And the original Pokemon games were Love still the game. topping all the sales charts. GameSpot's game of the year was Soul Calibur. If Naughty Dog did start developing Uncharted in 1999, they would have no idea what the gaming landscape, what culture would even look like by the year 2007. True. Naughty Dog was releasing games like Crash Team Race around this time so yeah a lot can happen in eight years so now in 2024 we got to go back eight years ago and see when concord began development what was going through their heads and oh it's 2016 the big game was overwatch Hi. the original overwatch a game that was not initially free to play this is why it makes sense that concord isn't free this to is play. exactly what i was that saying standard didn't exist when this game began development guardians of the galaxy was one of the most popular ips the idea of big team-ups and wacky characters this was is a really good culture point. live services were still a novel and interesting idea on game consoles they were golden gooses that kept laying golden eggs, the gift that keeps on giving. And also there was there was a lot of culture war stuff going on in 2016. Remember Ghostbusters 2016? Was that 2016? It felt like a new American Civil War was gonna break out over discourse of this film. That was Maybe 2016? Maybe this is what the developers imagined people would want eight years Jesus. from then. Maybe these decisions were made later, but clearly, this long development cycle did not do this game any favors. This is 100% right. What does it have to right. show for it? The visuals, the graphics. I mean, yeah, it looks impressive. A lot of work went into motion capture, but that a lot also of money meant that they couldn't went into motion the capture. Character designs after the massive backlash. All of those fancy textures and particle effects and animations and graphics did literally nothing to save this game from being the biggest flop of all time. Yeah. If you need proof that good graphics alone don't result in good sales figures, this is it. This right it's here. It's the game. But also, this shows that you can't just have good gameplay either because the gameplay is So this is the point bad. I was getting at before There's is so that's what I've heard. There's external factors that contributed to this game's failure. Look, this game is too bloated. There's way too many cooks in this kitchen all trying to check off boxes of what they imagine would result and the largest number of possible sales. They wanted to appeal to everybody, and by doing that, they appealed to nobody. I think it's yep. horrifying to think about what Sony could have spent their time and money on instead of Concord. Like, for one, they could have not shut down Japan Studio. A new twist in metal. Honestly, I would have taken PlayStation Home 2 over this. Companies there's there's a lot of things that they could, like, um, Killzone, or what's the other one? Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Came out with PlayStation 3. Someone help me. We'll analyze this failure for years to come because Starts it with an did R, everything I think. wrong. And that's unique. Resistance, this thank is a you. unique way to fail. But I imagine Sony already knows this. See, for a while, Sony has been trying to push for more live service games from its biggest franchises. Last of Us Online, Horizon Online. And Bungie, who they acquired a few years ago, was supposed to be in charge of managing all of this. But it turns out the situation at Bungie, it was it was just a complete mess. Financially, management-wise, yeah, we heard about that stuff was too. bad. Stuff is really bad. A lot of projects from PlayStation Studios got canceled. A lot of live services. A lot of Bungie staff got laid off, and Bungie was basically restructured. At the time, I thought this was pretty drastic. I mean, Sony had spent a lot of money on Bungie, and looking back, maybe this was in part due to Concord. Like, Maybe? Sony would have had the pre-order numbers on this game, and, like, it would have been in the single or double digits for Steam. You know, it would have been <laughs> bad. This this is astonishing to me. I've never seen a game fail this badly in terms of, you know, just Like, at money. all. Like, even this indie game was games, such a like... catastrophe. 
it probably changed how Sony views live service games. Hopefully. You should have just made a new kill zone, Sony. Hey. Should have made a new kill zone. Probably probably not with these character designs, though. I don't know if that would... I don't think that would go over very well. Again, huge thanks to Fabletics for sponsoring this video. Go to fabletics.com slash knowledgehusk to get 80% off site-wide when signing up to be a VIP member. You said, not gonna lie, I found some huge irony, irony in Helldiver's CEO when he said how a game for everyone is a game for no one. Yeah, I mean, Helldivers 2 still has a ton of people playing it, so there, it has that going on, but that is the biggest fail in video games, um, probably ever. Like, it's hard to find a game on Steam that has that little players all the time, let alone one that just came out. So it's impressive in and of itself.